Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I have got some easy crock pot recipes. This one looks a little different because normally I just do dinners, but I've actually got two dinners for you guys. I have some homemade crock pot apple butter mm, and I cooked some chicken to put in the freezer um, for cooked shredded chicken. So I just put all that in one video and I'm gonna share it with you guys really easy recipes and i will have any recipe links of course in the description box below so you can get those but i hope you guys enjoy this crock pot video and let's go ahead and get started Okay, okay, y'all, it is time. It is time for me to make another batch of my apple butter, y'all. This is so delicious. So I'm actually gonna do a double batch this time and I am so excited. So I looked up and found these bag, three pound bags of apples on sale for $2.98 at Royal King. They had a bunch of them. And y'all know, if you have ever been to Royal King, they have like random things. And so they got a big case, they got big cases of apples in. So I got three, well, six pounds total, but I got, um, each bag was two ninety eight. I think I did have to throw one away because one of them was rotten once I got it open. Um, but I love this recipe because it's so easy. You, the hardest part is peeling and cutting up the apples. That's it. Once you peel and cut the apples, you'll put them in there, add your ingredients and let it slow cook for like eight hours on low all day long until it's mush and then you blend it and it's pure heaven. Amazing on homemade bread, biscuits, all that good stuff. So I'm finally down to half a jar and it's time to make some more. So I'm going to wash, peel and cut up my apples and then I'll come back. So I've got my apples all cut up. And in here, y'all, this thing is almost full. So I will have this recipe linked down below for you guys. So you can get exact measurements and everything. But I'm telling y'all, this is so easy. So I've got some apple juice. cinnamon and I'm doing a double batch so y'all y'all amount y'all's amount if you do a single batch will be different than mine just look for the right just use the recipe that's in the description box So I did cinnamon and I did pumpkin pie spice. It is so good in here, I'm telling you. All those extra seasonings. It's delicious. Get it 
have a good stir. Make sure everything is coated. So I just put this on low and I let it cook all day long. About eight hours. You just want it to be mush. It's going to literally... If you've ever made homemade applesauce, take it even further than applesauce. You want it to be mush mush. So we're just gonna let them cook low and slow all day. And I'll come and check on them every couple hours or so, give them a stir, just so you keep those juices flowing and everything. Mixed together well. Here is what it looks like when it is pretty much, pretty much mush. I can't talk. It has pretty much shrunk down to about half the amount of apples. And y'all, this house, it smells like fall up in here. I ain't even playing. So I have just unplugged it um, while we ate dinner. It's just stayed warm and I'm just gonna take and blend it up really, really smooth, no chunks with my immersion blender. If you have a regular blender, you can just spoon it in, you know, blend it a little at a time. But I love doing this um, cause I can just do it all at once and do it in here. And then we will get it put into our jars. I've got it nice and smooth. Y'all, look at that. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. In the morning for breakfast, I'm gonna make me some biscuits. And have me some homemade apple butter and biscuits. And y'all, it is so easy to make. So easy. Oh, okay. So you can do this several ways. The dog's gonna start barking. You can let it completely cool, put it in freezer bags and freeze it and then thaw out a bag at a time and use it or you can put it in mason jars this will last a few months in the fridge i just buy these um and then of course you can can it um i really want to can it i'm just nervous to do it by myself and i don't have the time right now to ask my mom or you know anybody to come up because she's working and everybody's busy so i always just um put them in these jars and then just let them completely cool, set them out on the counter, let them completely cool, and then put the lid on them and store them in the fridge, give them as gifts. I'm telling you all this stuff is amazing. So I did a double batch, which was six pounds total of apples. So I did four full jars. And I love doing this, especially say you like making homemade gifts for baked goods for Christmas, for the holidays. I love making this and you can even get the littler jars, like the little jelly jars and you can can little jelly jars of this gifts. So pack one of those and like a homemade bread and give it to your neighbors, give it to family. I personally love home, homemade, home baked um, gifts like that. So I will definitely be making this again closer to Christmas so I can give these out to my neighbors. But like I said, these will last a few months in the fridge. You can also freeze them in the jars or in Ziploc baggies. And you can can them, of course, like normal. Of course, if you can them, it makes them shelf stable and they last a whole lot longer. Um, which I really do plan on canning, actually canning some. Hopefully before the end of the year, I can get some actually canned and get put in our prepper pantry. But for now, I'll just keep it in the fridge in the freezer. I want to try this Asian sesame dressing that I picked up at Aldi. When I seen this, I thought this would be really good with chicken in a crock pot and then serve it over rice with some broccoli on the side for dinner. So I've got about five of chicken breasts here. They are boneless, skinless. 
And I'm just gonna dump those in. And I'm just gonna pour this over the top. And we will see how it is. It looks really good. Mm, it smells good. So I'm probably just gonna do like half the bottle. I don't think we need the whole bottle. So I just did half. And that's it, y'all. We're just gonna let it cook up. If I think it needs more, then I'll come back and add some more, but it looks like that's enough. And then I'm gonna cook up some minute rice and we'll have some rice with it with some veggies later tonight. Just gonna cook it on low for a few hours. To go along with our sesame chicken, I'm gonna make some fried rice on the black stone. I made, made and cooled this rice down um, a few hours ago, so it's nice and cool now. I always recommend using cold or leftover rice for fried rice. It just does so much better. We like a lot of eggs in ours, so I got four eggs. And then these are the veggies I'm using. I've got some shredded carrots that I need to use, some leftover broccoli from previous recipe or from previous dinner gonna use that got some frozen corn and then just some oil of course and then i'm gonna use soy sauce and some hoisin sauce to season So we honestly didn't care for the Aldi's sesame dressing. We won't use it again, but we've done a version of this before and used other brand sauces and it's been super delicious. So we will just go back to our tried and true <laughs> sauce, but I wouldn't recommend the Aldi's one. I have got about five chicken breast here. I need some chicken breast cooked and shredded for some upcoming recipes. Plus this is really good just to have cooked and seasoned and put in your freezer for you can thaw it out for quick meals, lunches, anything. So I just took and thawed out this bag that I had in the freezer and it ended up being five good size chicken breast. So I'm going to take and season both sides with some of this John Henry's garlic pepper seasoning. I can't not season my chicken, y'all know that. So I just flipped them. Go do it to the other side. And then I have pulled this Italian dressing out of the fridge also. And I'm just gonna pour a decent amount of this in there. And that's also gonna give it some really good flavor. And I feel like this is a nice base to most like shredded chicken recipes. Um, this is going to give your chicken really good flavor to start off with, with whatever recipe it can go in. So I've just put some of that in there and then we're just going to let it cook up till it's completely done. And then we will shred it up. Y'all, it's so easy to make shredded chicken in a slow cooker. So I'm just going to take and put it on low and just let it cook up till, for a couple hours till it reaches 165 internal temperature. Here is what the chicken looks like after it's cooked and cooled. It didn't get done to about midnight last night. I put it on really late. I knew it was going to be <laughs> cooking through the night, but I just um, 
took it out of the crock pot, let it cool for a couple hours, set another alarm for me to get up and put it in the fridge. So it has been cooked and cooled. And then now all I gotta do is just shred it. And then I just put it into individual, I'll do like two breasts per baggie. And then I will freeze it in the freezer and I'll put on there like two shredded breasts, like two cooked and shredded breast on the bag. So I know how much is in there, but I got them all shredded up. So I ended up putting two and a half breast in here and I just put two and a half chicken and then I put that it was cooked. So these, I'm just gonna put it right in the freezer and then I will pull them out as needed. Um, you can do, like since I had a big slow cooker, I could have done like two or three bags of this. And it's really convenient being able to just throw it in there and let it slow cook, not have to deal with it. And then when you're done, you can shred it up and pop it in the freezer. So it is perfect and easy meal freezer prep. I am getting dinner ready to go for tonight. So we're gonna do French onion burgers. I have shared these on my channel many times, but y'all, these are one of our favorites. And it's so easy to do these in the slow cooker and they are delicious. So I've got about a pound and a half of hamburger meat here that I have just patted out and it equaled out to four decent sized burgers. Now, normally when I do this, I season the burgers and I sear them on both sides and then put them in the slow cooker. But my stove top is full right now because I'm doing some freezer prep and I'm making some recipes to put in the freezer. So since my stove is full, I'm just gonna put them right in there. This is how I do my meatballs anyways. So I think it's gonna be fine. I have seasoned one side already with some of this garlic pepper seasoning. And I'm just gonna do the other side. Always season your meat, y'all. So important. So I seasoned it with that. And then all you're gonna do is take a can of French onion soup mix, or French onion soup, and just put it over the top. That is it. I'm telling y'all these are so good. <laughs> now you can do it as this, this, but I go a little extra and put some extra sliced onions in here to let it cook up. Luke really enjoys this because he's able to put these on top of his burger with the cheese and he says it's really good. So I always put some onion slices in here for him. And, and then we will just cook these for about four or five hours on low. Just make sure they're completely cooked through and We'll come back and I'll show you how I put them together and what side dishes we'll serve with it. Here are the burgers, they're all done. Then to go along with our French onion burgers, I've got a couple small potatoes that I have just cubed up and I got some of these rainbow baby carrots. And I'm just gonna toss those in some olive oil with the John Henry's garlic pepper, the Kinder's red garlic, and some salt. Toss those in that, and then I'm just going to put them in the air fryer. I've got my air fryer um, heating up, and just roast off some veggies to go with our burgers. I'm gonna make Luke's plate so that way y'all can see it with the onions and everything. So I feel like buttered buns is a must <laughs> for this recipe. It's just so good. So I buttered my buns. These did shrink up quite a bit, but. And then I'm just gonna layer on my onions. And these, even, like if you don't like onions like me, I just like the flavor. These are still really good just with the flavor without the onions themselves. And then we top it with provolone cheese. And y'all served it with our veggies. So good. Thank you. 
And that is it, y'all. I hope you enjoyed these super easy and delicious crockpot recipes. If you make any of these, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear what you think about them. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye, guys.